Hello and welcome to this lesson on total internal reflection, which is part of the waves topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at describing total internal reflection. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to draw a range of diagrams demonstrating total internal reflection, state that total internal reflection occurs when the angle of instance is greater than the critical angle, and calculate the critical angle of a material using angle of incidence and refraction. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQAA level physics specification, 3.3.2.3, refraction at a plane surface. So when a light wave travels from one medium to a less optically dense medium, it's refracted away from the normal. So we can say that the angle of refraction is larger than the angle of incidence, as shown in this particular diagram. So we know that when we increase the angle of incidence, we increase the angle of refraction. Now, as you increase the angle of incidence, that angle of refraction will get closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees. Now, eventually, if you keep on increasing our angle of incidence, the angle of refraction will equal 90 degrees. So eventually, the light refracts along the boundary. Now, the angle of incidence at which this happens at when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called the critical angle. Angle. Now for this to happen for any boundary, the light must pass from a more optically dense medium into a less optically dense medium. So we can say that for this to happen at any boundary, the light must pass from a material with a high, high refractive index to that of a material with a low refractive index. So N1 must always be greater than N2. Now we can use this to work out a value for our critical angle, which is theta c, for any boundary with an equation. Now we know that sine theta c, so sine critical angle, is equal to n2 over n1, where n1 must be greater than n2. So theta c is the critical angle of the boundary, n1 is the refractive index of material 1, and n2 is the refractive index of material 2. Now you can derive this formula by arranging and rearranging Snell's law. So we can say n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So we can rearrange it to get a ratio of the angles and the refractive indices. So we can say n2 over n1 is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Now for the instance in which uh, we get the angle of refraction at 90 degrees, we know that theta 2 is going to be 90 degrees, and we know that theta 1, the angle of instance, is by definition the critical angle. So we can substitute these values into the equation. And we can say n2 over n1 is equal to sine theta 0 over sine 90. Now sine 90 equals 1, so we can say n2 over n1 is equal to sine theta over 1. So therefore, as shown, we can say that sine theta, sine theta c is equal to n2 over n1. Now, as well, you should remember that the refractive index of air is 1, so this can be simplified. This equation can be simplified for any material to air boundary. So we can say that for a material to air boundary, N2 is therefore going to be equal to 1 over sine theta c. So it's important to note that for angles of instance greater than the critical angle, refraction cannot take place. So what this means is that all of the light is reflected back into the material. So you would see the following taking place. So when your angle of incidence is above the critical angle, you will get no refraction, only reflection. So we call this total internal reflection. Now it's called the total internal reflection as all of the instant light en incident light energy is reflected back into the material. None of it is lost out of that material one. Now there are two conditions for total internal reflection. Firstly, that the angle of instance is greater than the critical angle for the boundary, and secondly, that the refractive index N1 is greater than the refractive index N2. So let's look at an example of this. So a question could state to you, find the critical angle of a glass to air boundary if the glass had a refractive index of 1.5. So we can say sine theta c equals n2 over n1. We know that n2 is, is air, so is what, the refractive index is going to be 1. So therefore sine theta c equals 1 over 1.5. You work that through and theta c is equal to 42 degrees. So anything above 42 degrees will lead to total internal reflection. 
Now, the next question says, a plastic block is immersed in liquid. If the refractive index of the liquid is 1.40 and the critical angle for light traveling from plastic to glass is 79.1 degrees, what is the refractive index of the plastic? So we use our equation sine theta c equals n2 over n1. We rearrange it to find n1, which is the, the refractive index of the first material, which is the liquid. So the plastic, my apologies. So we can say n1 equals n2 over sine theta c. So we pop our numbers in, 1.4 over sine 79.1 so n1 is equal to 1.43 which makes sense because for this to take place you've got to have n1 being greater than n2 which it is so in today's lesson what have we looked at we've looked at the idea of total internal reflection and the idea of working out the critical angle by saying sine theta c is equal to n2 over n1 so if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson you should be able to draw a range of diagrams to demonstrate total internal reflection you should be able to state that the total internal reflection occurs when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle and you should be able to calculate the critical angle of a material using things like the angles of incidence and the angles of refraction so thank you very much for watching this lesson on total internal reflection which is part of the waves topic in aqaa level physics thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day